Thank you all. And you're Rob as well. Yeah, yes. we have two Robs here. It's kind of nice. Grab a seat. Hello. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Yes, we'll bring John too. Okay, and Andrew's Mr. Loud. Mr. Loud. Okay. Uh, also joining Ellen is an American voice actor best known for voicing the sniper in Team Fortress 2. He's married to Ellen McClain right here. And has starred alongside her in Half-Life 2, Team Fortress 2, and Dota 2. Please welcome. How do you want to pronounce? Mr. John, John Patrick, Patrick Loud. Mr. Loud. <laughs> Good, good. We're, we're ready for the scorching questions. Scorching. <laughs> Uncover the scandals. I'm, before, before we start the questions, I kind of want to know, um, was it love at first sight? How did it that, was for me. How did that work? Oh. It was for me. Uh, we met on a European tour of uh, the Broadway show Showboat, and she was uh, starring as Magnolia, and I was humbly playing guitar and banjo in the pit orchestra. Mm. And uh, the uh, character of Magnolia has to accompany herself on the guitar, in the second act. And so the first thing that Ellen ever said to me was, have they told you how pitiful I am? Oh. My first words too. She, she had actually bought a guitar and was, was learning how to play it. And I was just kind of appalled that anyone would expect any person to actually learn how to play a Jerome Kern song in a couple of months. And so she asked me for, for guitar lessons and it turned out that- And I had one. That's right. The, the, she was greatly moved by the guitar lesson. So, uh, <laughs> so then we, uh, we, uh, she looked me up, and we had a date in Amsterdam. We went out to an Italian restaurant in Amsterdam, and I talked about the uh, the originative causes of World War One for an hour and a half, and she was won over. So now we're married. And of course, we we just uh, had you know June twenty eighth was the hundredth anniversary of Archduke Ferdinand's assassination. Assassination, and that was the so that straw was that broke the camel's back and sent sent Europe into the First World War. So that was a very warm, romantic moment for us. Nice. <laughs> 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 well, we're both very interested in history. So. Love it, John. I heard that you play trombone. Uh, yeah, among yeah. other things, among trombone was my first instrument. I'm a tuba player. So. Oh, cool. Very oh, nice. Just probably bring that. Yeah. Welcome what? to Brass Family. <laughs> yeah. And I have to admire your portal uh, earrings there too. Those Thank are lovely. You. Thank you. And my, I have portal necklace that oh. my that my friends uh, Charlie and Kevin gave me, and David. This so this cute. I got this at Gamer X mm -hmm. last year. That's so. awesome. Well, yeah. Um, so, do you want to open up to questions now? Sure. Sure. Again, please uh, just state where where, uh, where you're working from. Too. Are you are you going to call on people? Or? Um, sure. Why don't we start with Mr. Army Man over there? <laughs> I'm uh, the Geeky Panda from the Geeky Panda blog. What was it like working for Valve, working on great titles like the Half Life series, Portal, and Team Fortress Two, or well, Team Fortress? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it's a gap. Uh, the guys are insane. Um, they're they're really a lot of fun. The writers are incredibly creative. Uh, Bill Van Buren, who did did most of the directing, although I mean, he would he would. Uh, say that the writers did, but uh, he was the one who directly interacted with us a lot of times. He was, uh, com what is it, the NASA thing? Capcom. Capcom. Right, Bill right. Van Buren was Capcom. So we'd be in the recording booth and, and Bill would be, you know, on the button and he would be translating the direction from the writers, but it would all, you know, usually come through Bill. But Chet, Chet Falasak and Eric Wolpaw and Jay Pinkerton, I mean, all these guys are just... Mark Laidlaw. Yeah, Mark Laidlaw. Uh, incredibly creative uh, folks and great to work with. Uh, and I'm Elsa, I'm from morepower.com. Um, is there an opera that you're exceptionally fond of that you'd like to do again? The Marriage of Figaro by, uh, you know, Mozart. Mozart, that guy. You just failed your music history. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I've, so I've, forgotten, I've forgotten most of what I know. That's right. That's but, right. I, you know, I first did The Marriage of Figaro in 1978, and I played Susanna, the young maid. And, of course, most recently, uh, actually three times uh, recently, I played Marcellina, 
The old battle axe. The old battle axe, <laughs> who, and, you know, who, who we discover during the course of the opera is she's uh, Figaro's long lost mother. <laughs> so, you know, then this is a, a wonderful revelation in Act Three uh, of The Marriage of Figaro that Marcellina is actually his mother. Over there? Uh, GarethPond.com. What got you into video game voice acting? Him. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, it, it's, yeah. Well, when we moved out to Seattle in 89, I just got an agent and uh, uh, I'd done a little bit of, I did a little bit of radio DJing uh, and uh, did a couple of commercials. We both did back in Indiana. And uh, WFIU. And I got a voice demo and just started doing voice work. And of course, in '89 there were no computer games yet um, because computers just weren't fast enough. Uh, and so I was doing, you know, KFC commercials and oh, weird uh, home diabetes instruction kits for home testing. And, Goodies, headache powders. Yeah, and, and Boeing industrial videos, stuff like that. But in '96. Uh, Sierra Online and uh, Humongous opened up in Seattle and started sending out auditions. And they sent them to my agent and I auditioned. Of course, back then, uh, everybody would go down to a recording studio downtown to audition. And they'd put all these auditions on a great big piece of you know, two-inch wide tape and mail it off to, the, to Sierra Online or whatever. And it'd take like two months for them to figure that stuff out. And nowadays, you just audition at home on your computer, and it's all done black and fast. But uh, it was just that they auditioned, and uh, really, f for eight years, eight or nine years, I, I abused Ellen every night, telling her to get a voice demo. And she would say things like, oh, no, that's all. F they don't need women. I don't have the right, kind, the of right kind of voice. I wouldn't so. get any work. I so finally she got a voice demo in 2000 and you know now she's more famous. 2002. Right, sorry. 2002. Yeah. At a lull in my career. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> so that was, that's kind of how it, how it happened. But that's uh, how any actor gets into anything is by auditioning. Uh, just to carry off of that question, uh, did you have to go on location with your demo on a CD or uh, did you well, send you it Well, you know, initially when we, even when I got uh, the demo work done in 02, uh, that was still being put on CD. Now you get a demo, and it's just a you know sound file, just an MP3, and you don't have to get a hard anything. Of course, when I got my demo, it was on a cassette, cassette that was tape. steam powered and pulled by dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, you know it's, it's it's been it's gone through amazing technological revolutions over the last twenty years. Uh, we'll go uh, point here. Uh, Jeremy from Minneapolis. Uh, speaking of Act Threes, is there any uh, games in the near future that we might be able to hear either one of you uh, from certain games that might come to Three soon? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, unfortunately, uh, Gabe Newell was attacked by the number three when he was very young, <laughs> and uh, he's never really gotten. Up. Now, we have no idea. Uh, voice actors are always the last ones to know. If you know, once once they call us into the studio, it's almost a done deal. That you know, they've got everything else lined up, and they just need the, the voices now. Um, so we, you know, you'll probably find out before we do. I wish we were higher up on the totem pole, but you know, it's like you know, when you're a writer on a movie set, if you wrote the script, it's like you're the you know, the last person to know anything. So you know, people with talent are just you know, shunned. Sorry, not if it's totally. Oh, wrong. we'll go way back there. <laughs> Um, Dan from GuyFace.com. I was wondering, are you surprised at the reaction you get from fans of your voice work? Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but I was in the beginning. Yes, yes. In, yeah, the, was... in the beginning. So, so when Portal came out, <laughs> the first thing that kind of clued us in that something was going on, we got an email. Somebody found our email address, which wasn't hard. I mean, well, of course, this is this amazes too because you know we're old and the internet to us is like a series of tubes, like. You know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, it's, it's like when Portal came out. Uh, Twenty-four hours later, somebody emailed Ellen from Denmark, saying people are in the streets of Copenhagen chanting, "The cake is a lie. The cake is a lie," and. Uh, and so that was a huge surprise. Right. 
and our first hint that perhaps, you know, Portal was going to be successful. Because I'll tell you, the people who put it together, and, and, and who was I talking to? Well, Bill Van Buren. I was, John and I were talking to Bill Van Buren recently, and, uh, you know, everybody just thought that Portal was this little extra thing, and, you know, a little thank you to gamers, and, you know, wasn't really going to do very much. And then well, yeah, but it was just a little short game, and they thought, you know, we'll include it in the orange box as kind of a little present, you know, just a bonus. And it totally took off on its own. So. Yeah. So it was a big surprise in the beginning, but you know what I think is so cool is that you know here I am, a woman in my very early 60s, and I have this entree into the multi-generational world of gaming. So you know, it, and particularly with my voice students, when I say something, they actually pay attention to what I have to say because I'm GLaDOS. <laughs> <laughs> they fear deadly neurotoxins. <laughs> Uh, way in the back over there. Uh, Joe Smirlo, Gary says, uh, this uh, question specifically for John. Um, no One Lives Forever is a very beloved game by a lot of people, and of course you were one of the major voice actors in that series. Um, have you heard recently that people have been talking about that series again, even though there's some issues with the uh, IP and things like that? Have you been confronted about either being part of any remakes or uh, sequels, perhaps? Well, I, I have heard that people are talking about it again. I haven't heard from any of the guys who developed the original games, so I, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure they know how to get a hold of me. I'm with the same agent. But evidently, you know, whatever plans they have, they haven't come so far as to start actually lining up uh, voice actors and stuff like that. Thanks. Thanks for the question, though. I hope they do. I mean, I was because was, you know they named the character after they me. Did, yes, they did. They, they, uh, they, he was really apologetic when I went in to do, uh, you know, N Nolf Two. He said, "Oh, you you spell your name with an O. Oh, sorry. No, I was totally meaning to to name the character after you. So uh, that was very fun. Yeah. What did you think of that? What did the, the, the oh, I thought it was I thought it was great. I mean, I was, what a, what a nice uh, trip. Forever were hilarious to work with, and, and we had a great time. So, so unfortunately, we have one more question. Time for one more question. I know it's kind of fast. Uh, you've been waiting patiently. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Inc. from Anagamers.com. I was wondering, uh, Ms. Ellen, uh, what was your thought as an opera singer upon hearing that all your vocal work would go through so many digital filters before it came out through the game? Well, I didn't know that was going to happen. <laughs> 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 didn't bother me. I didn't know. Um, when I, when I got, uh, you know, I had to send in an audition for the GLaDOS voice, and they, the instruction to the actors auditioning was, you know, sound as much like this computer-generated voice as you possibly can. And I'm assuming that I'm the one who got the closest. So, for the beginnings of Portal, before the character loses the morality core, um, I was just trying to sound exactly like that computer-generated voice. And then, uh, ultimately, of course, it was Bill Van Buren who developed the equation for how the voice was going to be processed. So when I, you know, uh, when I heard it the first time, it was like, oh, well, that's cool. So I, you know, I know they, you know, auto-tuned and, you know. That auto-tuning is mostly. Did mostly all that stuff. Right. But, but the thing that surprised me the most is that they let me sing. Because, you know, they, I told them I was a singer, but they had never heard me sing. And then they, you know, got Jonathan Colton to write a song, and, and so the first time they heard me sing was when I was in the studio to record Still Alive. They just sort of took it all on faith, you know, so. They're maniacs, like I said. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we all enjoyed it. Well, thank you guys for uh, joining us up here today. Thank you. And, um,